Now, the graduate market. Life doesn't get easy for, easier for graduates. When I graduated, we had the milk round, like, you know, we've come here to help you, like I'm sure Agon comes and has their own stands at other times. Um, but you knew you would get a job. Nowadays, there are so many graduates coming out of both actuarial degrees and maths degrees uh, that there is no surety of getting a job. It also depends on the market climate how easy it is for um, students to get actuarial jobs. And it's counter cyclical. Now, this is actually quite intuitive when you think of it. If you are in um, a recession, the banks are not recruiting, the accountants are not recruiting, everybody has heard that actuaries earn a fortune, so what do they want to be? They fill in all the application forms and they want to be actuaries. So the companies have got a big pool of people to choose from. When the when everything is booming, then the banks are paying megabucks, because as I explained to you before, if you try to calculate what they're paying you by the hour, they're not paying that much. They're probably paying you less than the cleaners in the university. But it sounds big bucks, so they mop up a lot of the graduates who otherwise would have been actuaries. So those who genuinely want to find out um, actuarial jobs are then able to find them. So how are you going to get that magic job if you haven't been able to find one on the milk ground? Now before I go down that road, one thing that um, I was actually an academic for, for 10 years that really um, <coughs> It's a bee in my bonnet I've had since I, since I did um, lecturing or, or research is the, the role I had. What um, happens is if you are good enough to get a job from one of the companies on the milk ground, you're probably good enough to get a job from all of them. So you apply and they have um, assessment centres. Do you have an assessment centre? Oh, well then you've no, got to apply true. to him. There's the man. Not but, but most of them have overnight assessment centres. So you're going away from the university for two or three days. I know now they are doing more in the holidays, but there are still some in that first term. If you are at university because you need the lectures, what are you doing on assessment centres? So if, as I said, you will get invited to two, three, maybe four assessment centres and you have missed out on a whole term of your magic third or fourth year. So if you are one of these bright young things, and I'm afraid I wasn't, and I'm just a hard worker as you've probably gathered, you choose which company you really want to go to and apply to that and stick with one assessment centre. It might be a difficult decision, but if you're that good, the chances are, even if you didn't get in on that assessment centre, you will then be able to find something once you've graduated. The rest of you, who are more like me, you work hard, and the important thing is to get a good degree. The better your degree, the more likely you are to be able to pick up a job. The other thing is that you... Um, or maybe two assessment centres. I don't want any of you coming back to me afterwards and saying, you told me only to go to one assessment centre, I didn't get in and that's why I'm a failure and I'll never get a job. None of that please, okay? These are my personal feelings and take two actuaries and you'll get three opinions. So we then have, what are you going to do about um, getting the job? That's why I said that you have to... Um, Think about networking. You at Heriot Watt are more lucky than at other universities because you've got four years of a degree. You make sure that you make friends with the people in the years above you. 
you make, I have, have they got an alumni here? Mm -hmm. You make sure you go to alumni events and make friends with the actuaries who have already left here. The best way of getting a job is through a friend. The next best way, of course, is through a recruiter. Please, 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 and I'm begging you on my bended knees, do not, when you register with recruiters, mind you, I don't mind if you do it to the others, but not to me, register for every single job on the database which you are not suitable for. If you're an entry-level student, there is no point in registering for a chief executive job. <laughs> Every morning we come in to, we have something called CV Inbox where all the CVs come in and we see these people registered for jobs and it doesn't give a good impression of you to, uh, to a company because it shows that you can't see um, the expression of the wood from the trees, the essential from the inessential. What will happen if you register with us and some of you who just come in, who came in um, at the correct time, I won't say late, um, missed what I'm saying to those who were early, um, is that whereas we get some graduate vacancies, and therefore you must register, it's a bit like with the lottery. If you don't buy a ticket, you can't win. But don't hold your breath that a recruiter is going to be the main source of finding graduate entry roles. Okay, so as I say, you must register to make sure that you're in with a chance when a vacancy comes up, but use your own methods if you can. And certainly, as I said, don't register for everything in sight. What we do is we've actually got a separate database where we put graduates, so that the minute a graduate vacancy comes in, we can then find them the right graduates and, and place them.